Hello and welcome to this special broadcast. I'm Parikshit Lutra. The Lok Sabha elections are just days away and News 18 has conducted Pan India opinion poll. We will bring you details of the poll over the next two days. But uh, first up, here is the methodology we have adopted. More than 1,18,000 people were surveyed across uh, 518 Lok Sabha constituencies across 21 states. Essentially, the poll has covered 95% of the Lok Sabha constituencies in the country. Now, let's look at the projection in some of the key states, starting with Punjab. Numbers coming in. Punjab vote share projection for the Lok Sabha. 13 seats in Punjab. Uh, we are expecting the NDA to have a vote share of 13%, 38% for the Congress Party, 15% for Ahmadi Party, and 22% for Shiromani Akali Dal. So, how does this really translate into seats in uh, Punjab? Well, it is uh, three seats for the NDA. Uh, we're looking at about seven seats for the Congress, uh, one for the Ahmadi, uh, two for the Ahmadi Party, uh, and, sorry, I'll, uh, two for the Shiromani Akali Dal and one for the Ahmadi Party. Let's uh, look at Delhi's vote share projection at this juncture. Remember, Delhi has seven seats. Uh, we're looking at a 58% vote share for the BJP in, uh, in Delhi. We're looking at 39% for the India Alliance and 3% for others. If we look at uh, the seat projection for Delhi across seven seats, we're looking at a clean sweep for the NDA. Let's look at uh, the opinion poll for the state of Himachal Pradesh. Now, if you look at the four seats there, 67% uh, of the vote share is expected to go to the NDA, 27% to the India Alliance and 6% uh, to others. Let's uh, look at how the seats could be distributed across four looks of our seats. Well, uh, it, it's going to be a clean sweep according to the survey for the NDA and none for the India Alliance or other parties. Let's uh, now go across to our guests. We are joined by Tuhin Sinha of uh, the BJP. We are joined by Mahima Singh of the Congress Party. We're joined by Naivan Sharma, spokesperson of the Ahmadni Party. We're also joined by senior journalist Rashid Kidvai and senior journalist Pankaj Sharma, who is also the former media advisor to Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Kamal Nath. Thank you very much for uh, joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin with Rashid Kidway. Rashid Kidway, uh, looking at the survey numbers and some of the changes that the BJP has made in the seats, in the list that have uh, been announced over the last few days, how do you think uh, the BJP is poised and how they are strategizing to improve their tally over 2019? Uh, thank you, Prakshit. I think it's a very determined bid on the part of BGP to uh, retain and maximize uh, maximize their gains. Look at Delhi. I think they have changed, you know, six uh, sitting MPs. There is no plausible explanation other than the fact that Aam Aadmi Party and Congress alliance is there, so the BGP doesn't want to take a chance. But it's a very good strategy. I am very surprised by, uh, you know, Himachal Pradesh, 67 percent. Remember, uh, you know, uh, there is a government, a Congress government in uh, in Himachal Pradesh. So there is uh, so much of change. I think this is one reason Congress needs to uh, ponder over. Very quickly on Punjab, I think uh, the findings may uh, disappoint um, Aadmi Party, but it, it shows Congress in a very good light. If Congress can uh, get seven Lok Sabha seats, it will be very, a big achievement. But overall, very dispel picture for Congress and India Alliance and thumbs up for the BJP as far as this survey is concerned. Right, let me go across to the Ahmadi Party spokesperson of the program, Naivan Sharma. Uh, Naivan, let me ask you, how do you expect the Ahmadi Party to perform in Delhi, uh, in Haryana, in Punjab for that matter, especially in Punjab? How do you think the India Alliance will perform versus the NDA? Yeah, uh, good evening to all uh, your viewers. And um, as far as Punjab is concerned, see, I was just watching your uh, numbers in Punjab. And uh, whosoever would be watching these numbers in Punjab would be rather smiling on this, where NDA is getting three seats and Ahmadi Party is getting one seat. If you go in villages of Punjab, you're going to see posters, banners stating that people from BJP, people from Akali Dal are not allowed to enter inside the village. And this is not just one, two thousands of 
um, the small villages, they have these banners. And um, I, I don't know, I with due respect whosoever has done this survey, I totally disagree with this. And Aam Admi Party in Punjab is a government um, um, that's totally running for the people. They, we have been doing things that have, that have never been done in the past. 90% of the people in Punjab are getting free electricity, 42,000 government jobs just in one and a half years. So the work that we are doing, it's, it's totally a people's government. And we are sure that we are going to get 13 out of 13 seats, zero seats for the BJP. And as, as far as uh, Delhi is concerned, in Delhi, we are fighting with the Congress and we have an alliance. And um, uh, BJP has already replaced most, most of the uh, member of parliament that shows that they are also not even confident in Delhi. In Delhi, Delhi people are with Arvind Kejriwal. Delhi people are with Arvind Kejriwal model of governance. They know who are honest people, who are the people who are going to sit there and fight for them, who are the people who are going to support the, the, the uh, policies of the government and not restrict uh, and not create problems and hindrances in every policy of the government. People are going to give zero seats to BJP in Delhi. People are going to give zero seats in Punjab. That's the reality. Okay, let me now uh, go across to uh, Tuin Sina of the BJP. Tuin Sina, on one hand, our survey, and if we can show the numbers for uh, the satisfaction with the economic performance of the government and what people expect uh, in terms of economic performance in future, how many are sure that they will see a good economic future? Uh, clearly, the advantage right now, as per our survey numbers, which you will see on your screens in just a bit, give BJP and the NDA alliance an edge. Having said that, they have made key changes. Just look at the, uh, the list that has been announced today by the BJP. They have fielded Manohar Lal Khattar from Karnal. If you look at Delhi, for example, out of seven seats, they have only retained Manoj Tiwari. Six of the Lok Sabha faces in Delhi have been changed. Uh, Tuin Sina, what does this say about the strategy of the BJP? On one hand, yes, the survey shows uh, there is high level of satisfaction with the Prime Minister. People are going to be voting uh, for the BJP because of the PM face, regardless of the candidate. But at the same time, why is the party feeling the need to change some of these key players? Good evening, Pariksha. Good evening, good evening, everybody. The only reason we changed some of the MPs is because we have a massive bench strength. Today, BJP is the largest party in the world with over 20 crore members. And yes, you know, the only time you change members of parliament is one, when there is an accountability and performance attached to every seat, and two, there is a massive bench strength. Why should any political party or any journalist have a problem with us giving, um, giving a chance to new faces? We believe that winnability is extremely important in politics. And, you know, if we don't make these changes, we would end up being the Congress way, which, which is never going to happen. So I think the difference between the two parties is very clear. We are futuristic. We have a plan in place for the next two decades, both for the country and for the party. The Congress and other, you know, opposition parties don't have a plan for the next 20 hours. Hmm. Okay, let me go and go across to Maima of uh, the Congress party. Ms. Maima, let me ask you about... Uh, the survey in terms of the most trustworthy leaders. 58% of the respondents as per our survey have said it is Narendra Modi, 20% for Rahul Gandhi, 11% for Arvind K. Jival, and 11% for Mamta Banerjee. Now, AAP, Congress and TMC are all part of the India Alliance. Having said that, how are you going to beat the NDA on popularity? How is the Congress going to make sure that the seat-sharing arrangements get gets absolutely right because there has been some feedback coming in that uh, the Congress has been slow to take off, whereas the BJP and the NDA's preparation has been at a much higher level over the last several months. Uh, Parikshit, if you could just reiterate the question because I, uh, there was some connectivity issue. I lost your voice in between. All right. I'd like to speak about the popularity numbers over here. In terms of the most trustworthy leaders, we're putting those numbers on our screens as well shortly. 58% of the respondents, uh, Ms. Maima, have said it is Narendra Modi who's the most trustworthy. 20% said Rahul Gandhi, 11% for Arvind K. Jival, 11% for Mamta Banerjee. Now, when it becomes a popularity contest, when people are voting for the BJP because of the Prime Minister's performance and the work done by the government over the last five years, they are expressing confidence in the work of the government. How will the Congress and the India Alliance capture the imagination of the voter? 
Uh, I would say that looking at your sample size, I think the people who have been asked these questions, number one, you know, this is not even one, that doesn't constitute even 0.1% of the total population of this country. And I think the questions should have been asked of the protestants in Ladakh sitting on a, uh, on a uh, fast unto death uh, in Ladakh with Sonabangchuk. They should have been asked of the farmers that are mm. being subject to tortures at behest of the government in Haryana, Punjab border, um, in Haryana. Uh, Punjab borders, they are, they are sitting there on UP borders for, for almost a month now. They should have also been asked of the women who are getting raped daily. They should have also been asked of the, the uh, youngsters, the youth that are unemployed today and in massive numbers. But I'm very sure that the, the few lakhs or probably the number that I have is around 1 lakh 8,000 that you have, uh, you know, surveyed across. I'm very sure do not represent mm -hmm. those who uh, are, are uh, you know, at, um, at a very uh, poor position at behest of this government, the current government, which is, which is ignorant of the needs of the day of this population. And in fact, 59%, merely 59%, I would say, in spite of all the impeccable support system that this government and Mr. Modi, Modi has, uh, is, is also appalling. Because you see, Rahul Gandhi ji stands at 21%, when he's the only voice talking about social justice in this country, and we do not have the means to advertise our, uh, uh, you know, our endorsements, our promises to the country as the Modi government has. So uh, I would certainly say that these uh, surveys, these numbers reflect of the impeccable support system that the Modi government has, and yet they are not sufficient, and yet uh, you know, one should look at the uh, ground realities of the country. I'm very sure that these people who have been questioned are also not aware of the uh, rising prices. LPG prices, uh, Mr. Lutra, have gone up by 120%. The petrol prices have gone up by 37%. The diesel prices by 64%. Milk prices by 71%. Mustard mm. oil prices by 59%. And flour prices by... Also 59%, I'm very sure that these people who have voted in these surveys are not aware of these prices. They are not aware that the indirect tax collection today, 64% of the indirect tax hmm. collection comes from 50% of the poorest of this country, whereas the 10% richest okay. actually contribute to very less. So you see these numbers, to me, right. appear very skewed, and there's, a, there's an imbalance of proportion. All right, Maima saying that is your viewpoint. Let's see how things work uh, on the ground in the days to come. Let me go across to Pankaj Sharma, someone who has also worked very closely with uh, Kamal Nath in the past. Uh, Mr. Pankaj Sharma, if we look at uh, the survey in terms of satisfaction with the Madhya Pradesh government's performance, if we can have those uh, statistics on our screen, 62% people say that they are very satisfied, 15% say they are somewhat satisfied, Neither satisfied nor dissatisfied would be about 13%. 67% are very satisfied with the chief minister's performance. 18% somewhat satisfied. How do you see these numbers coming out? What do you think will be the big challenge for the India Alliance, for the NDA in the state of Madhya Pradesh? See, it is your opinion poll. So commenting on the outcome of this opinion poll is not appropriate for me. But let me tell you, to me, uh, the outcome seems uh, usually un un unrealistic. The ground situation is different. Madhya Pradesh ground situation is also very different. It's a different matter that uh, recently BJP won the elections there. But farmers are hmm. so dissatisfied. Youth is so dissatisfied. Everyone is, you know, agitating. So how can, how can uh, you... Uh, give these uh, the, the this sort of uh, outcome that uh, these many percentage of people are satisfied with madhya pradesh government i don't i don't think this is the situation also for himachal hmm. uh, punjab and delhi uh, you are saying sweeping delhi bjp sweeping with seven seats himachal they are getting all, all hmm. those four seats and in punjab also punjab hmm. The ground situation is mm. BJP is number four. Last time it won mm. two seats 
it may not win these two seats uh, this time also. You know, 267 candidates have been announced by BJP till now. And it is so clear from both the lists that how helpless BJP leadership is. It seemed so tremendously under pressure that the party could not refuse the tickets to those mm. whom it didn't want to make the candidate and had to accommodate many to whom mm. it didn't want to give the ticket. So the internal situation is so mm. volatile within BJP that after releasing the first list of 195 candidates in one go, BJP took 11 days, 11 days to announce the second list. That too with the names of only 72 mm. candidates. The announcement of second list took this much longer time, essentially because keeping out Nitin mm. Gadkari's name in the first list became a very serious point of conflict between RSS and BJP uh, top leadership, as party leadership was of the view to shift Gadkari from Nagpur, and he was adamant that he won't move. The word coming in from Pankaj Sharma and also Mahima Singh is that all is not well in the NDA. Look at what's happened in Madhya Pradesh. They've changed key faces uh, in Haryana. They've changed key faces in Delhi. They've changed key faces. And I'd also like to ask you about certain findings of our survey. On one hand, yes, we get the view that 67% people feel that their economic condition is better than it was five years ago. 68% people feel they're optimistic about their future. But at the same time, 56% people feel jobs is the number one issue for voters. 47% feel it's inflation. 46% feel it's law and order. So on one hand, while people may be happy with the performance of the government, they want continuity, but they do feel that when it comes to jobs, inflation, law and order, a lot more needs to be done. Is that probably the reason that well, some of Parikshit, these big changes have happened across the state? Well, Parikshit, first of all, you need to be better informed with the names of your representatives because I'm Sinha, not Sharma. Of course, it doesn't make any difference for me, but those who believe in caste politics and are trying to divide the country on caste lines may have taken offense if you, you know, use the wrong surname on somebody. But anyway, when it comes to inflation, see, this Congress party is extremely ignorant, but then it tries to paint a picture as though the people of this country are ignorant. Retail inflation, as of as on current date, stands at around 5.1%. You know, the if you look at the employment data, if you go by a, a substantial, if a very comprehensive SBI report, the unemployment rate is at its lowest at 3.1%. So I don't think, you know, this Congress party really does so much research. The infrastructure creation is of an unprecedented level with 11 lakh crore worth of capex which is you know uh, allotted for this financial year it simply cannot be jobless growth but yes the nature of jobs are, ch are changing gig economy has emerged in a big way and that is why you know the data is often not up to the mark but the fact is you know in terms of infrastructure creation in terms of bringing 25 crore people out of the poverty line in terms of reducing poverty in the country to you know something in the vicinity of three percent this government has done a remarkable job and i think that is what will ensure mm. that not only in not only in um, madhya pradesh but across the country you know maybe punjab may be slightly different as you mm. Uh, as you showed, but again, you know, I don't believe that BJP will win three seats, at least double that number. But across the country, including in areas like Tamil Nadu, the BJP is going to surprise you. All right, so you're saying you're expecting surprises uh, in Tamil Nadu, in Kerala as well. Let me uh, go back to uh, Navyan Sharma of uh, the Aam Aadmi Party. Navyan, I'd like to ask you about uh, the India Alliance's strategy going forward. As a party member, are you satisfied with the way the India Alliance is functioning? What is uh, the word? What is the campaign pitch that you would like to take to the voter in order to uh, counter the BJP on its economic performance, on the schemes that they have announced? Over the last three to four months, we've heard projects worth uh, 10 lakh crores being announced, uh, almost 10,000 crore of airport projects. Every day, something or the other is being announced. So how will the Amadi Party and India Alliance counter this? 
See, as far as Aam Aadmi Party is concerned, we are a very responsible and dedicated member of the India Alliance. We are on the ground and we are working on the ground. Whatever seats we have got, we are giving a hundred percent on the ground. We have reached the villages. We have formed. We have formed village committees. We have formed circle in charges, and we are uh, getting into campaign mode. And as you just said, that um, there have been a lot of announcements. Yes, I agree with uh, that. That there have been a lot of announcements. That there have just been announcements. The reality is far away from the announcements that they make. If you talk about Punjab, they are saying that BJP is going to win six to seven seats. But the reality is that Punjab is a agriculture dominated state. Farmers want to come to Delhi. to register their protest against the promises that were done by the prime minister himself but they have stopped them with a the concrete uh, blocks and um, wires and they are throwing um, um, they are they are pushing farmers back with the uh, um, um uh, bullets and they just trying to stop them they they treated them so badly one farmer have has lost his life this is the this is the condition this is how they have been treating farmers they they have imposed nsa on the farmer first time in the history of uh, india nsa has been imposed on a farmer and they 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 are um, telling farmers that don't go in protest or we'll we'll seal your property we'll seal your bank accounts this is how they have been treating the farmers how do they even expect to get even 1% vote from a agriculture dominated state like punjab and haryana where they are treating farmers like this if you talk about haryana they have been treating um, farmers so also, badly they have been treating with navyan uh, we're also uh, putting on our screens Survey numbers: forty-seven percent people in our survey saying they are very satisfied with the Punjab government's performance. Thirty-three percent saying somewhat sort satisfied. Fourteen percent saying neither satisfied nor dissatisfied. And with that question, I'd also like to go back to the Congress spokesperson, Mayima Singh. Mayima Singh, do you think that uh, the farmers' protests and issues faced by farmers uh, that is something that will give the Congress an edge in a state like Punjab? According to our survey, we are seeing uh, seven seats for the Congress. uh in uh, punjab one for the aam aadmi party uh, what about haryana as well do you feel that you will make uh, strong gains there i think that congress party is headed to a major gain uh, mr luthra because when our revered leader mr rahul gandhi walks on the roads that the taxpayers of this country walk on and their children walk on striving through their lives every day day in day out it is him who promises the people of this country that we will legislate for msp ki guarantee it is him who says that we will legislate for pehli pehli naukri pakki just like we did uh, right to food security we did right to information right to education it is the congress who guaranteed that legislated to guarantee uh, those rights and it is us who just like mg narega and other uh, legislations will bring these legislations just today we have also uh, established our guarantees for nari nyay for women you know uh, one woman out of every poor family should be given 1 lakh uh, a guarantee of 1 lakh every year so these are the schemes these are the issues we are talking about it is the congress party and mr rahul gandhi who have brought the employment unemployment issue back to the political electoral discourse because the bjp had totally polarized this election as they have been doing before they you know they are best at headline management fervent uh, publicity in spite of all of that the survey uh, uh, in spite of the, uh, the limited size as i have indicated before which is just uh, under 0.1% of the total population it still reflects the inefficiency of the current government i would say because you will find out that more number of people that are voting for okay. the popularity of mr modi are ignorant of the the schemes that this government has actually given so if you look at those proportions you see how these surveys play out actually uh, uh, out of proportion they blow mm. out of proportion uh, certain uh, issues and certain uh, facts Uh, mm. A certain imagery, I would say, these are okay. skewed projects. Okay. Uh, Mayima Singh, we'll we'll have to take a break at this point. I'll request Tuhin Sena, Mayima Singh, Pankaj Sharma, uh, Navyan Sharma to stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We will be getting you Uttar Pradesh numbers when we are back after a break. The Lok Sabha elections are just days away and News 18 has conducted a pan India opinion poll to capture the mood of the nation. Now before we reveal the details, here is the methodology. More than 1,18,000 people were polled across 518 Lok Sabha constituencies in 21 states. 
essentially, the poll has covered 95% of the Lok Sabha constituencies in the country. Now, let's look at the projections in some of the key states, starting with the biggest of them all, Uttar Pradesh, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, let's begin with the vote share projection for Uttar Pradesh, Lok Sabha. 80 seats up for grabs, 57% is the vote share that uh, we are predicting as per survey for the NDA, 26% for the India Alliance and 9% for the BSP. Now, as far as seat projections go, this looks like a clean sweep for the NDA. 77 seats going to the NDA as per our survey, two to the India Alliance and one to the Bahujan Samaj Party. Now, let's look at uh, the broad numbers as things stand as of now. Let's look at all the states, let's start with Bihar, out of 40 seats, the NDA poised to win 38, India Alliance 2, the state of Kerala, this is where the India Alliance has an edge at 18, uh, NDA at 2, in Madhya Pradesh with 29 seats, we're looking at a clean sweep for the NDA at 28 and 1 for the India Alliance. In Tamil Nadu, yes, this has been a big focus for the NDA, big focus for the India Alliance, out of 39, we're expecting uh, the India Alliance to win 30 and uh, BJP and the NDA to open an account in states like Tamil Nadu and Kerala as well. In Haryana, uh, it seems to be a clean sweep for the NDA with 10 seats. Punjab, 8 seats uh, to the India Alliance. So it's advantage Congress, advantage Ahmadi Party, 3 seats uh, for the NDA. In Himachal Pradesh, we're looking at a clean sweep with 4 seats. Uh, Delhi, this is a... This is a state where the BJP has changed six candidates out of seven. So in Delhi, we are still expecting the NDA to pick up seven seats. And uh, it seems that the India Alliance will not be able to open its account. In Uttar Pradesh, this is the biggest prize of them all with 80 giant seats. 77 here going to the NDA Alliance. India Alliance not doing very well with just uh, two seats. So today we've given you figures for 242 Lok Sabha seats and the NDA has a clear edge there with 174 seats in its favour, 61 for the India Alliance. So it's advantage NDA today out of 242 seats. Keep tuning in to CNBC TV 18. We'll get you the rest of our survey as well. Let me now go across to our guests. We're joined by Tuhin Sinha of uh, the BJP, Mahima Singh of the Congress and Aam Aadmi Party's Naivan Sharma. We also have with us senior journalist Pankaj Sharma. Also on the programme is Samajwadi Party's Abbas Heather. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Abbas Heather, let me get you in uh, for the Samajwadi Party's view. Uh, look at the numbers coming out of uh, Uttar Pradesh. The sample size was 1,18,000 people across uh, 518 uh, constituencies. Now, when we ask you how things are for the India Alliance, we're looking at a clean sweep for the NDA this time around. Do you think the Samajwadi Party will be able to improve its performance? The India Alliance will be able to make a big dent in the state of Uttar Pradesh? Uh, certainly, certainly. If you if you talk about the survey, uh, if I'll calculate uh, 500 on 518 seat, so the uh, if you talk about the ratio, it would be one is to 100, 11,271 people. So that would be the ratio. And first of all, I am I'm not questioning your survey, but the problem here is in any survey. The, Surveys are based on assumption that the people who are being surveyed are telling the truth. But apparently, here there, there, may, there might be some apprehension among the people. People may not tell the truth because there are certain you know, fears among themselves. So that is a reality. I'm sure people by their ballot are going to tell that they are going to vote against the NDA and Bharti Janta Party and they're going to vote for the India Alliance. And second thing, because Bharti Janta Party and the government has failed people of the country miserably on every front. They have just given false promises and nothing else. They have not delivered anything what they have promised. They were supposed to give two crore job every year. By now, they would have given 20 crore job. But what has the country got? The youth are asking for a job. Even if you talk about Uttar Pradesh, in every district, people are protesting against Bharti Janta Party government because they want, they want job. Paper has got leaked. More than a dozen paper has, paper leak, leak has been happened in Uttar Pradesh. If you talk about farmers, they are they want a guarantee on MSP. They are fighting for their right. And what the government is doing, they are throwing a, a bullet, you know, through drones. So this is what has been happening. People want jobs. The people want development. And Bharti Janta Party is just trying to deviate them from the real issues. That is that what they have done. And I'm sure that the results will be different in Samajwadi Party, India land. We are... We are 
I am sure we are working on all the 80 seats in Uttar Pradesh and we are going to win most of them. All right, Maima Singh of the Congress, 59% of the people surveyed say that they are satisfied with the UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath's performance. And let's pull up the numbers on the government's performance as well. Uh, so the large numbers seem to be in favour of the BJP government in the state. Uh, how will you change the narrative, uh, Mayama Singh, as far as the state of UP goes? When it comes to Uttar Pradesh, this has been a problem state for the BJP, for, for the Congress for a few years now with uh, not so strong ground architecture for the Congress party. I would say, uh, Mr. Lutra, that uh, I am very sure that Giriraj Singh's uh, constituency, constituency is uh, BJP workers who showed him black flags just two days ago were not questioned in this survey. I'm also sure that in, that in Amethi, mm. uh, BJP workers also were not questioned and people were not questioned in this survey who just days ago, you know, were speaking on a very popular news channel that uh, not only has she not done any work in that constituency, but she has rather uh, been the reason for the shutting down of the triple IT and the steel plant in Amethi. So the ground realities are very different. And I would uh, choose to agree with the Samajwati uh, Party spokesperson when he says that, uh, you know, people have a certain amount of fear because when the who's who of the country can be arbitrarily incarcerated, you know, uh, as a result of misappropriation of laws at behest of the government of the day, then, I mean, common people, of course, they do not want to speak openly. They don't, they don't have the freedom to speak openly, rather, I would say. So this, uh, again, you see the numbers that are being projected. I would choose to, I would rather politely beg to differ, as I've already cited, that your sample size is not even point is less than 0.1% of the total population of this country. And I would rather like these questions to be asked of the people in Ayodhya whose lakhs of people whose houses were raised uh, because that corridor was being brought up and those videos, the plight of those people has not been uh, reflected or, uh, anywhere across the media. I would also like the people in, uh, you know, elsewhere in, in UP, uh, the youth of UP being questioned who have uh, faced major miseries at the behest of the government because the papers were leaked. Something as a, a public service commission paper can be leaked in a state like UP, then, you know, only, uh, uh, only uh, I mean, it's it's the government Ram Bharose in UP, basically. So uh, I am very sure All that right. our promises, uh, our Mayma guarantees Singh. to the people, uh, which, which Mr. Rahul Gandhi projected when he was an Amethi, and you should have, you would have seen rather, I would say, the uh, images that came out of Amethi when Rahul Gandhi ji was traveling across Amethi, promising the youth, Pehli Nokri Pakki, and other guarantees. That is percolating to the uh, people. And okay, Mayma Singh, when, when we speak about uh, paper leak cases, we have seen paper leak cases and uh, uh, major issues like that being raised with the, the scale, Congress government in Rajasthan and now. the previous Congress government in Madhya Pradesh as well. Of the scale you're seeing now. But let me get in a quick word. Okay, let me get in a way. Let me get in a word from Tuhin Sinha of the BJP. Okay, I'm well, going to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you, ma'am. Tuhin Sinha, uh, well, if we look at the awareness about government schemes, if we can pull up the survey numbers on uh, the schemes of the Narendra Modi government, Ujwala Yojana, 61% people say they know about the scheme. Jal Jeevan Mission, 56%. Avas Yojana, 53%. PM Kisan, 51%. Jandhan Yojana, 51% of the people surveyed say they know about this. 40% for Ayushman Bharat. Now, what is the opposition trying to do, uh, Tohin Sena? And it's quite clear from uh, the statements made by all opposition leaders on our panel over the last one and a half hours that... You need to pin the government down on the economic performance, on jobs, inflation, law and order, corruption, religion, polarization. Uh, in recent Council of Ministers meetings, the Prime Minister has asked his party men, ministers, to go to the public to make sure that people know about the schemes that the BJP, the government, has led over the last nine years. The performance of these schemes need to be communicated. So do you think... The communication of the government's performance and challenging and fighting the narrative of the opposition is going to be a challenge for the BJP in the upcoming Lok Sabha election to Insina. 
Well, Parikshit, first of all, it was very amusing to see the Samajwadi Party spokesperson and the Congress spokesperson say that, you know, in your polls, people have, uh, you know, shown a preference to BJP because of fear. Let me reassure you that the only people living in fear in Uttar Pradesh are gangsters like Atik Ahmed, who, you know, the Samajwadi Party had patronized and which uh, the Congress Party had a soft corner for. None of the other people in Uttar Pradesh are living in fear. They are living in absolute, uh, you know, their prosperity. Now, uh, again, I have a slight, uh, you know, I think you would be lucky if um, you are right with the numbers. The BJP is expected to win at least 77, but I can tell you that this time it could well go up to 79 or 80. Right from the construction of the Ram Temple to the flawless deliverance of all the government schemes. You know, again, when you talk about Ayushman uh, Bharat, the number on your screen was 40%. I can tell you that most of the poor, and I travel extensively across the country, are aware of Ayushman Bharat. And in fact, even in cities, people come from villages to avail of the benefits of Ayushman Bharat. So I think that, you know, Uttar Pradesh is the best example of the, of the optimal deliverance which double engine Sarkar can bring. And you will see in the results, Congress, you know, is struggling to even, uh, I mean, if Congress is so confident, why is Rahul Gandhi not announcing that he would, uh, why is he not asserting himself as a candidate from Amethi? You know, in fact, uh, mm. even when it comes to Rai Bareilly, I doubt if they will be able to put up a winnable candidate. So I think the Congress is in the worst position over there, mm. but the BJP is expected to win at least 77, and that could go well up to 79 or 80 this time. Pankaj Sharma, coming to you, when it comes to Uttar Pradesh, it was advantage uh, NDA and BJP in 2019. It seems to be advantage uh, BJP and NDA right now itself. Do you think the inauguration of the Ram Mandir uh, may somehow just seal the election in the BJP in the NDA's favour? I don't think uh, the construction of Ram Temple will have much impact. And, you know, your figures, uh, I don't want to comment on that, but your figures are so unbelievable. 77 out of 80 in UP, 38 out of 40 in Bihar. It's, it's not possible. The ground situation is not there. Let me tell you that as per my information, and Tohin Sinaji would be knowing more, RSS has won BJP leadership that it is winning its winning chances on 107 out of 303 seats are little poor this time. This means getting a clear majority could become di difficult. Therefore, BJP taking great care in selecting candidates. Narendra Bhai Modi's popularity graph has actually gone down and he is not in a position to get anyone win the elections in his name this time. And he understands this. RSS understands this. BJP understands this. So how can you, I, I mean, I can't believe that BJP can get 77 seats out of 80 in UP. 38 NDA will get in Bihar. That is not possible. Actually, they are losing seats in many states. There are states, 14 states. In 14 states, almost all the seats are with BJP already in 14 states. There is only a scope of 10 seats in these 14 states. With Delhi can, can be increased only by 10 seats. So they are losing seats in Haryana. They are losing seats in uh, Madhya Pradesh, they are losing seats in Rajasthan, they are losing seats everywhere in Chhattisgarh. In South, they practically have no chance. You are giving them five seats in Tamil Nadu, which is, which is impossible. Last time in Telangana, they got four seats. Those four seats also can, uh, uh, cannot be riven by BJP this time. In other states, there, there are no chances. In Northeast, they are losing seats. In Assam, they are losing seats. So, hmm. I mean, these, these figures are really... Let me also get it. Ahmadi Party's Nevan Sharma. All right. All right. You don't agree with these numbers. Uh, we respect your view, Mr. Pankaj Sharma. Let me also get in the Ahmadi Party spokesperson once again. Uh, hmm. Nevan Sharma, when it comes to popularity, even 2019 Lok Sabha election was a popularity contest. 2014 was a popularity contest as well. People saw Narendra Modi as a strong leader. And uh, the question was... Who else? Uh, now, when you look at the survey, when it comes to the most 
trustworthy leaders. This is a point that we had taken up earlier, and I'll take this up with you as well. 58% of the people surveyed say it's Narendra Modi who's the most trustworthy. 20% say Rahul Gandhi. This numbers, these numbers have changed now. In fact, it's 58, 59% for Narendra Modi. When you speak about whether people will vote for BJP because of Modi, regardless of candidate, 85% people say they will be voting for the BJP because of Narendra Modi. So he remains the most popular figure for people to vote for BJP. He's also among the most trustworthy leaders in the country. Now, how do you, uh, how do you really target that? Uh, isn't that a challenge for the Ahmadi Party, the Congress and the India Alliance altogether? Uh, see, with due respect, I respect your uh, uh, figures and numbers, but honestly, when you go on ground and you talk to people, especially in states where Ahmadmi Party is directly involved, we are going on ground and talking to people. People don't bother this time about who's going to be the prime minister. People are not going to vote for the prime minister because people have been in a very bad condition if you talk about their economic condition, if you talk about um, um, what the government has done for them. You were, you were just now showing some figures with regards to Ujwala Yojana. You were saying, uh, you were saying Ayush Man Bharat. If you, if you talk about the reality, they, they increase the people know that they have increased the prices of uh, cylinder uh, uh, 600 rupees and then they have reduced it to uh, by rupees 100 rupees they understand this it's not easy to fool people like this again and again if you talk about ayushman bharat yojana you go on ground talk to people they will tell you that if you take your ayushman card with um, yourself and you want to get the uh, um, the operation or any, any such thing done, they, they, the hospital are not accepting the card. They say that they don't get money from the government. So these are the small things that really affecting. If you talk about businesses, many MSMEs are closing because they are not getting any support from the government. Because of the GST, small businesses are um, forced to close. They are not happy with it. If you talk about Yuva, the, the Yuva is standing in lines for job. One job um, is there um, when the government puts out one job, there are thousands of candidates applying for that job for that matter there was one job for peon in haryana and there were 4400 more than 4400 candidates ranging from phd to mbas to mb M mcs this is the condition on ground people this is the reason and if you see this is the reason that they are not getting candidates this is the reason that they have to remove candidate if, the, if they were so sure that they are doing, going to get they're going to get 80 percent of the votes because of um, uh, the name of our prime minister why are they struggling in putting up new candidates why are they struggling in finding candidates you talk about Punjab, you talk about Haryana, you talk, talk about Delhi, they, they were not finding candidates. And if people are so much uh, happy with the work that they have done, they have not been in this tough time. The reality is that in Punjab, All right. in Haryana, in Delhi, wherever Ahmadmi Party is fighting, BJP is not going to get even single seat. Your, your, your survey is showing, showing that um, okay. uh, BJP is getting 10 seats in Haryana. They are not even going to get one seat in Haryana. They are not going to get one seat All right. in Delhi. Let me get Tuhin Sena of the BJP to respond. Tuhin Sena, Tuhin Sena uh, what the opposition has been saying over the last two hours on CNBC TV 18 is that there is anger among farmers. Now, farmers are a big vote bank in the country. Now, the recent protests show that they probably have not been happy with the government's promises and how those promises have actually been delivered on the ground or to what extent have they been delivered. Uh, do you think this is a challenge that they will, that the BJP will have to tackle on the ground? This is something uh, which would be a cause uh, for concern for you, Tuhit Sina? Well, when you talk about the farmer protests, they were, they were restricted to a very small geographical area where obviously we are not in power. So that explains they were largely sponsored by and the Amar If you can also have numbers from Punjab and Haryana up. So that, Please that go ahead, explains, you know, so in fact, uh, most of these protests were sponsored by the Amadi party and the Congress party. And often that is the reason why they, they you know, uh, they couldn't last for long. Fact is that when it comes to MSP prices, on an average, there has been a 70% increase in MSP prices from 2014 until now. Neighboring Haryana is procuring a record number of 14 crops at MSP prices, which no other state is doing. So I don't think these are these were manufactured protests largely, and that is one of the reasons why you know they, organically they could not sustain themselves for too long. And these are sporadic in nature, which explains again once again why they are largely sponsored. 
Now, on a lighter note, you know, since Mr. Pankaj Sharma has been repeatedly insinuating that RSS said this and RSS said that, which, you know, seems to be imagined by him rather than re in real, you know, why doesn't he join the RSS? Why doesn't he join the BJP? That might be a better option because he seems to be privy to conversations which nobody in the BJP is aware of. All right. Uh, let's uh, also get in a final word from uh, all our... Uh... Panelists here, it has been a great discussion so far. Uh, Pankaj Sharma, looking at these numbers right now, uh, the edge seems to be for the NDA. If you look at the survey numbers, you may or may not agree, and that is your view. But now, in order to capture the imagination of the voter, what is one thing, according to you, that India Alliance will have to do? India Alliance is going to give a good fight this time. You know, of course, India Alliance had its own problems because it's a loose federation of 27 political parties, political parties. And BJP is not a political party. BJP is a regi regiment. It's a brigade. So when you are a political party and you have an internal democracy in all the political parties, so this kind of a loose uh, federation is bound to have some problems. But my point is, from where BJP is getting any additional seat? See, in nine states and union territories, where mm. there are 58 parliament seats, all of them are already with BJP. BJP won all of them last time. And, and in another uh, states like Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Jharkhand, Karnatak, there are 107 seats in these states. Out of these 107, 97 are already with BJP. So a gap of only 10 seats. So my, my question is, Mr. Tuhin Sinha can enlighten me from where BJP is getting 370 seats. That means 67 additional seats hmm. than 303, uh, which it uh, won last time. That is the point. Hmm. India Alliance, India Alliance okay. has its uh problem. India Alliance may win, may not win. That's a different thing. But, you know, telling, saying, telling All the right. nation that we are getting 370 seats this time is, is, is impossible. So you please first accept this. All right. So let's see what happens in the days to come. Uh, the model code of conduct is yet to be announced. And we would probably see that in the last, uh, uh, in the next three to four days. But as we go, let's put up the statewide tally of the 242 seats that we have shown today. Let our viewers see where things stand as of now. Our survey had a sample size of 118,000 people who had been surveyed across the country. This is the figure that we're looking at, 174 for the NDA out of 242. Clearly an advantage for the NDA. If we look at these numbers, opposition, of course, contesting it. We'll be back tomorrow with more numbers, more analysis. So keep watching CNBC TV 18 for more.